We are out here today providing services for um, the most vulnerable population. People think that this is just something that, you know, like we we just came out of nowhere to, to undertake something like this. Uh, but in all actuality, we, we started this cult in 2017 after, after Hurricane Irma. Since then, uh, we've been using the opportunity of, of crisis to intervene on behalf of, uh, of vulnerable communities. Uh, we knew that there was going to be government neglect and because I'm a physician and because lives are on the line, we basically just decided to take things into our own hands. Uh, but these, you don't want to suck it up because we, we want to use these over again, right? We knew that vulnerable communities have far greater uh, implications and mortality and morbidity um, during, during this crisis situation, which is what we've seen. Um, and so we were able to mobilize the resources that we normally use for, for hurricanes to respond to this crisis. We've been out for a month and a half. We've provided uh, over 600 tents, we've provided um, toiletries, thousands of masks. Um, we've been trying to force uh, the Homeless Trust to, to get people off of the street. Uh, we are you know, basically going to provide uh, housing and shelter for people using the money we've been able to, to garner from the community support. In a perfect society, we, we would not exist. Uh, we shouldn't exist uh, because there are government entities that get paid millions of dollars uh, and have individuals that are, have been entrusted uh, to, to do this amongst this community. Uh, so far we've, we've tested about, uh, I guess almost 100 individuals, uh, maybe like five or six were positive and then we've also been sending people via ambulance. Uh, to the hospital who are very, very sick. We are testing uh, right now using the blood test, which is the, uh, the antibody test, which shows that if you've ever had an infection before. Um, and you would think during a pandemic, because this is the most vulnerable population, we are the epicenter of, of the virus, that you know widespread testing would be going on, but that's not the case. Uh, specifically in Florida, um, the number of cases are below uh, the number of people who actually have the virus because we don't have enough tests. About a month ago, I got involved with the Dream Defenders, and I've been helping them collect supply, men's clothing, hygiene products, and food. I've been helping them do COVID testing for this population since the South Florida um, government really hasn't stepped up. What's special about what's going on here with the Dream Defenders is that, that they set up bathrooms and showers, which are actually clean. If you see the bathrooms and showers set up by the city, they are not clean at all. This is a clean and safe place for them where they can get something to eat, where they can get medical supplies if needed, where they can get treatment if needed, um, and clean clothes, which is really important right now. in a state and a society that continuously prioritizes the needs of millionaires and the billionaire class while everyday people don't have the basics they need to survive. Um, and so we're fighting for our communities to have basic things, for everybody to have access to shelter, food, uh, clean water, a good education, um, a good job. Um, when instead, all too often, our communities are uh, criminalized and put in cages and, and um, the only resources we get from our government are police and prison. Yeah. 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 Got a bunch of donations and we went to buy some supplies. So we're just sorting them out for when people take showers. So here we have like big shampoos and like female hygiene female hygiene products. We have socks and underwears here for people who need them.
the toothbrush is in like the white. Are there three wrapped ones? Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> the laundromat charges by weight. So I'm getting the dirty uh, laundry and hanging it up to dry before we send it to the wash. We are in Overtown where we're seeing the worst of the crisis. The people who are like most ignored in society, people living on the streets. And so Dream Defenders has come together um, to basically just make sure people have the basics that we feel like everybody deserves. That have stuck out to me is that there's like a lot of people who come here first thing in the morning before they go to work and then come back at the end of the day to take a shower after work and so that means that there are people who have full-time work in Miami-Dade County and can still are still living on the streets that just speaks to the affordability crisis in Miami the fact that uh, we have empty sky rises that have multi, you know, that thousand dollar plus rent that nobody can afford this city and that people even with full-time jobs are still forced to live on the streets. met people who have been kicked out of the shelter for basic things like hey I, I need there to be social distancing and the shelter then punishing them for requesting social distancing by kicking them out um, a man who went into the hospital for back surgery and then the shelter said you need to prove that you don't have corona we need a note from the hospital the hospital said we don't provide that so they just kicked him to the curb 25% of the people that have been arrested since the start of this crisis are homeless. Um, and it seems like Miami-Dade County thinks the safest place for shelter is a jail, when we know that a jail is actually the worst place for anybody to be right now. This uh, virus thing, um, I'm kind of disappointed in our government. I mean, if they're not going to serve us by providing some kind of CDC, Center for Disease Control, they need to work something else out instead of just, oh, well, we don't know the answer. Call back next week. The situation has deteriorated. Um, they shut down the parks. For us homeless veterans, we can't get water, we can't get water to hydrate. We die in three days if we don't hydrate. If you don't get food, you can only last about seven or nine days. And the churches in the community, we are helping uh, people with issues concerning homelessness, uh, feeding, clothing, bathrooms, and sustainable housing, places for children to go safely. All I, all I want to do personally is, is if I can get housing and find anything else besides, I just want to get off the streets. So getting off the streets is important. Uh, for me, you know, I used to be account manager, promoter, educator. I've been in America since 1967 from Venezuela. My parents, uh, both from Trinidad and Tobago, both are passed away. But I became homeless a year and a half ago. These people here 
and um, Tim Paul has helped me out in the past couple of weeks, uh, taking a shower, giving me uh, nice shoes like these, these Under Armour shoes, these nice trousers, nice shirts. fighting uh, and fighting alongside black and brown youth uh, for their liberation. We are fighting against prisons. We are fighting to bring people home. We have vets here. We have people that work 40 hours a week here. We have people that are escaping domestic abuse here. For me, it's been really impactful to see the transformation um, from people coming in. Uh, and how they look towards people leaving. Um, and just leaving feeling refreshed and feeling like they have had a basic human need, need met today. I moved here from Boston uh, like three weeks ago, almost close to a month now. It's been a challenge. I have lost a few things, but um, I have gained way more than I've lost. I really miss my children and my family.